one of the really interesting perspectives that your book takes on a system like this is to see them, not to compare a system like this to humans, but to compare it to animals, of how we see animals. Can you kind of try to, uh, again, sneak up, try to explain why this <laughs> analogy is better than the human analogy, the analogy of robots as animals? Yeah, and it gets trickier with the language stuff, but we'll get into that too. Um, I think that animals are a really great thought experiment when we're thinking about AI and robotics because Again, this comparing them to humans, that leads us down the wrong path, both because it's not accurate, but also I think for the future, we don't want that. We want something that's a supplement. But I think animals, because we've used them throughout history for so many different things, we, we domesticated them not because they do what we do, but because what they do is different and that's useful. And I, it just like whether we're talking about companionship, whether we're talking about work integration, whether we're talking about responsibility for harm. There's just so many things we can draw on in that history from these entities that can sense, think, make autonomous decisions and learn that are applicable to how we should be thinking about robots and AI. And, and the point of the book is not that they're the same thing, that animals and robots are the same. Obviously, there are tons of differences there. Like you can't, you can't have a conversation with a squirrel, right? But the the point I do it that, all the time. Oh, really? By the way, squirrels are the cutest. I project so much on squirrels. I wonder what their inner life is. Um, I suspect they're much bigger assholes than we imagine. Really? Like if it was a giant squirrel, it would fuck you over so fast if you had the chance. It would take everything you own. It would eat all your stuff because it's small. And the furry tail, the furry tail is a, is a, is a weapon against human consciousness and cognition it wins us over that's what cats oh, do yeah. too cats out out competed squirrels and dog like yeah dogs no have dogs have love cats are have no soul they no, i'm just kidding <laughs> people get so angry when i talk shit about cats uh, i love cats anyway uh so you uh, uh yeah you're you're describing all the different kinds of animals that get domesticated and it's a really interesting idea that it's not just sort of pets. There's all kinds of domestication going on. They all have all kinds of uses. Yes. Like the uh, ox that you propose might be, the, at least historically, one of the most useful domesticated animals. It was a game changer because it revolutionized like what people could do economically, et cetera. So, I, I mean, just like robots, they're going to change. They're going to change things economically, they're gonna change landscapes, like cities might even get rebuilt around autonomous vehicles or drones or delivery robots. Like, I, I think just the same ways that animals have really shifted society and society has adapted also to like socially accepting animals as pets. Um, I think we're gonna see very similar things with robots. So I think it's a useful analogy, it's not a perfect one, but I think it's it helps us get away from this idea that robots can, should, or will replace people. If you remember, what are some interesting uses of animals? Ferrets, for example. Oh yeah, the ferrets. They uh, they still do this. They use ferrets to go into narrow spaces that people can't go into, like a pipe, or like they'll use them to run electrical wire. I think they did that for Princess Di's her wedding. There's so many weird ways work that work. we've used animals and still use animals for things that robots can't do, like the dolphins the, that they used in the in the military. I think the I think Russia still has dolphins, and the U.S. still has dolphins in their navies. Um, what? Uh, mine detection, looking for lost underwater equipment, some rumors about like using them for weaponry, <laughs> which which I think Russia's like, sure, believe that. And America's like, no, no, we don't do that. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but they started doing that in like the 60s, 70s. They started training these dolphins because they were like, oh. Dolphins have this amazing echolocation system that we can't replicate with machines and they're trainable. So we're going to use them for all the stuff that we can't do with machines or by ourselves. And they've tried to phase out the dolphins. I know the U.S. has like invested a lot of money in trying to make robots do the mine detection. But like you were saying, there are some things that the robots are good at and there's some things that biological creatures are better at. So they still have the dolphins. So there's also pigeons, of course. Oh, yeah. Pigeons. Oh my gosh, there's so many examples. The pigeon, I mean, 
The pigeons were the original hobby photography drone. They also carried mail for thousands of years, letting people communicate with each other in new ways. So the thing that I like about the animal analogy is they have all these physical abilities, but also sensing abilities that we just, we don't have. And like, that's, that's just so useful. And that's, that's robots, right? Robots have physical abilities. They can help us lift things or do things that we're not physically capable of. They can also sense things. It's just, it, I just feel like, I still feel like it's a really good analogy. Yeah, it's and, really strong. And it works because it's, people are familiar with it. What about companionship? And when we start to think about like cats and dogs, like pets, that seem to serve no purpose whatsoever except the social connection. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a newer thing. At least in the United States, like dogs used to have, like they used to have a purpose. They used to be guard dogs or they had some sort of function. And then at some point they became just part of the family. Um, yeah. And I... It's so interesting how there's some animals that we've treated as workers, some that we've treated as objects, some that we eat, and some that are parts of our families. And that that's different across cultures. And I'm convinced that we're going to see the same thing with robots, um, where people are going to develop strong emotional connections to certain robots that they relate to, either culturally or, or personally, emotionally. And then there's going to be other robots that we don't treat the same way. I wonder, does that have to do more with the culture and the people or the robot design? Is there an interplay between the two? Like, why did dogs and cats outcompete ox and, I don't know, what else? Like farm animals to, to really get inside the home and get inside our hearts. Yeah, I mean, people point to the fact that dogs are very genetically flexible and... um they can evolve much more quickly than other animals. And so they, evolutionary biologists think that dogs evolved to be more appealing to us. And then once we learned how to breed them, we started breeding them to be more appealing to us too, which is not something that we necessarily would be able to do with cows, although we've bred them to make more milk for us. So, it, but part of it is also culture. I mean, there are cultures where people eat dogs still today. And then there's other cult cultures where we're like, oh, no, that's terrible. We would never do that. And so I think there's a lot of different elements that play in. I wonder if there's good, because I understand dogs, because they use their eyes, they're able to communicate affection, all those kinds of things. It's really interesting what dogs do. There's a whole conferences on dog consciousness and cognition and all that kind of stuff. Now, cats is a mystery to me, because they seem to not give a shit about the human. But they're warm and fluffy and but cute. They, but they're also passive aggressive. So they're at the same time, they're like, they're dismissive of, of you in some sense. I think some people like that. Some people like that about people. Yeah, they want they want the push and pull of a, of a relationship. They don't want like loyalty or unconditional yeah. love. Yeah. That, does, that means they haven't earned it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe that says a lot more about the people than it does about the animals. Oh yeah, we all need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm judging harshly the people that have cats or or the people that have dogs. Maybe the people that have dogs need are are desperate for attention and unconditional love and they're unable to to um to sort of struggle uh to earn uh, meaningful connections. Um, I don't know. Maybe people are talking about you and your robot pets in the same way. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> it is kind of sad. There's just the robots everywhere. But it is, I mean, I'm joking about it being sad because I think it's kind of beautiful. I think robots are uh, beautiful in the same way that pets are, even children, in that like they capture some kind of magic of uh, social robots they have the capacity to have the same kind of magic of connection. Um, I don't know what that is. Like um, when they're brought to life and they move around, the way they make me feel, I'm pretty convinced is as, as you know, they will make billions of people feel. Like I, I don't think I'm like some weird robotics guy, I'm not. 
I mean, you are, but not in this uh, way. Not in this way. I mean, I just, I can put on my like hu normal human hat and just see this. Oh, this is like, there's a lot of possibility there of something cool, just like with dogs. Like, yeah. What is it? Why are we so into dogs or cats? Like, it's like that, it's way different than us. Like, it is. It's like drooling all over the place with its tongue out. It's like, what? It's like a weird creature that used to be a wolf. Why are we into this thing? Well, dogs can either express or mimic a lot of emotions that we recognize. Um, and I think that's a big thing. Like a lot of the magic of animals and robots is our own self-projection. And the easier it is for us to see ourselves in something and project human emotions or qualities or traits onto it, the more we'll relate to it. And then you also have the movement, of course. I think that's also really... That's why I'm so interested in physical robots because that's, I think, the visceral magic of them. I think we're, I mean, there's there's research showing that we're probably biologically hardwired to respond to autonomous movement in our physical space because we've had to watch out for predators or whatever the reason is. Um, and so animals and robots are very appealing to us as these autonomously moving things that we view as agents instead of objects. I, mean, I I love the moment, which is I've, I've been particularly working on, which is when a robot like the cowboy hat uh, is doing its own thing, and then uh, it recognizes you. I mean, the way a dog does, and it, it it looks like this, and the the moment of recognition, like you're walking, say, say you're walking in an airport on the street, and there's just you know hundreds of strangers. But then you see somebody you know, and that like, well, you wake up to like uh, that excitement of seeing somebody you know and saying hello and all that kind of stuff. That's a magical moment. Like, uh, I think, especially with the dog, it makes you feel noticed and heard and, and loved. Like that somebody looks at you and recognizes you that, to, that it matters that you exist. Yeah, you feel seen. Yeah, and that's a cool feeling. And I, I honestly think robots can give that feeling. Too. Oh yeah, totally. Currently, Alexa. I mean, one of the downsides of these systems is they don't. They're servants. They like uh, part of the. You know, they're trying to maintain privacy. I suppose, uh, but I don't feel seen with Alexa. Right. I it's, think that's going to change. I think you're right, and I think that that's. That's the game changing changing nature of things like these large language learning models. And the fact that these companies are investing in embodied versions that move around of Alexa, like Astro. Can I just say, yeah, Astro, I haven't, is that out? Is, is that I mean, out? it's out. You can't just like buy one commercially yet, but you can apply for one. 